Hello, this is Chris Kobe with the League of Women Voters of Portland. You are watching the video voter guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Dacia Graber, running for state representative, an open seat in District 35, which includes uh, Tigard and Southwest Portland. Welcome, Dacia, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for the office of state representative. Great. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to do this, especially in such challenging times. Uh, my name, as he said, is Dacia Graber, and I've spent my life serving my community one call at a time as a firefighter and working hard to make things better for people on the worst day of their lives. And so today, now more than ever, I'm grateful for the privilege of what I do for my work and being called to people's most vulnerable and desperate moments and being able to make things better, especially as we go through this COVID-19 crisis. The work I've done for the last 20 years really has informed uh, why I decided to step up and run for office. So intimately seeing people at the worst day of their lives, being able to make things, be things better really informed my advocacy anywhere from uh, paid family leave to issues around gun violence, uh, healthcare access issues. And I think that over the last few months as we've experienced this crisis with COVID-19, it's brought those things into even sharper focus. Uh, yeah, so when the dust begins to settle from all of this, we're gonna need a strong supportive voice for working families, essential workers and education to make sure that Oregonians are cared for and uplifted out of this crisis. So as I mentioned, I have been, um, you can hear a little bit of background noise right now, and that is because I share my life in my very busy house right now with four teenagers, my husband, a couple cats, a dog, it's a regular menagerie here. <laughs> and, and we're very busy with everyone at home. Uh, right now, my work schedule has shifted quite a bit with extra shifts. So whereas before I was in my normal work schedule full-time and sort of campaigning full-time, that's had to shift with the time so that I'm uh, campaigning whenever I can kind of in this venue through social media, through calls and outreach, because right now I'm working approximately 48 hours on and then 24 hours off. So it's, it's been quite a busy schedule, but like I said, it's just completely brought into focus how important it is that we have people on the front lines that are stepping up for working families. Daisha, you've made it clear these are tumultuous times. Uh, what challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? So right now we're seeing unprecedented, unprecedented rather loss of jobs and economic stability. And we have a place where families are deciding between paying for their rent or their mortgage or putting food on the table. And I believe that was already happening in the state and this crisis, the pandemic has, has exposed that struggle that so many Oregonians are already living with as a daily reality. So I think um, one thing we need to do, we need to do more with less and that's gonna be a challenge for everyone going forward. But as we turn the corner on this crisis and we absolutely are going to turn the corner on this, we need to address rental and mortgage relief. I'm sorry, I'm looking off to this. I have a couple notes about this because I had a lot of thoughts about this issue. Um, and we need to somehow guarantee that we keep people in housing as we move through this into the colder months again. This is, you know, we have already a housing crisis and homelessness crisis in this in, in this county and in our counties here. Um, one of the things I did prior to all of this is I managed, uh, I started a healthcare clinic, a free healthcare clinic for unhoused folks in Tigard. And we watched uh, as this crisis unfolded, how that already put that very vulnerable population into even more dire straits and, and how it just really exposed the frail line that a lot of people are living on between being housed and unhoused. And I think our crisis in that, we're gonna see a lot of that um, really brought to a head in this community and it's gonna take quite a bit of creativity. Uh, and then finally, um, <laughs> 
I am now a parent who's working more than full time, who is also homeschooling and online schooling for children at home. So I have never been more grateful for our state's educators. And I think everybody else can agree that our public education system is, in, is invaluable. So with the economic landscape so drastically changed, we're needing to guarantee that our students are gonna have a path forward to feel prepared and capable for the new challenges. And, and uh, we can talk a little bit about that, but um, we're learning all that we need to fill in the gaps as far as distance learning, remote learning curriculums. Um, in my experience as a healthcare provider, a first responder with a public health background and emergency management, uh, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do think that we are going to be um, living in a future where what's happening right now may come up again until we find effective vaccines and treatments for this crisis where we may have to shift. And, and we're going to have to think differently about how we do business. We're going to have to become more nimble. Tisha, on a, a more traditional issue, the legislature's conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur again next year. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with the current process of redistricting? And if not, how would you change it? I believe that we should have a citizen-driven redistricting process that doesn't allow the benefactors of the process, the incumbent legislators, to have any influence. And I say that um, fully aware that where I live in my district is kind of on the edges. So in advocating for this, I do think there's a possibility I could be advocating myself out of a legislative position from where I live. But I do think, I think that what's more important is that we have a process that's open and transparent and protect, protects communities and actual Oregonians and not special interests and legislators and politicians. So an independent commission or a citizen-based task force that consists of equal numbers of members from both major parties, as well as folks from other parties, we need to bring people together and maybe bring something um, kind of along lines of the California Citizens Redistricting Commission, where they also say that folks involved in that redistricting process cannot have held any elective office in the decade that they're participating in. So uh, redistricting that serves the needs of the communities above, you know, I guess this is a really wordy way of addressing the issue of gerrymandering and making sure that we're not intentionally or unintentionally gerrymandering our districts. Okay. I appreciate your taking the time to talk with us, uh, Daisy. Um, this has been the Video Voter's Guide. The primary election is uh, Tuesday, May 19. Please be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measure, the gas tax, and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.